in the light of his word. What a glory he shares on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all oh, we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky, but his mind quickly dries it away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, nor a sun, nor a tear. Can I buy why we trust and obey? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Not a body we bear, not a sorrow we share. Better to eat does richly repay. No, I dream, no, I lose. No, I draw, no, I cross. But is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Better to trust and obey. But we never come home, that the light of his law, until all, all the altar we live. For the favor he shows, and the joy he bless us, and for the hope we trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Then in fellowship free, we will sit at his feet, or we walk by his side in thy way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Brother, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to be happy in Christ Jesus, brethren, you have to trust God and obey God. Amen. We have to live by the commandments of the Lord, the instruction of Jesus. Jesus said, you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I ask you to do. This is the problem of the church. We call Jesus our Lord and Savior, but we don't obey him. We are not obeying him in what we are doing. We are not obeying him the way we dress. We are not obeying him the way we talk. Brethren, he said we should obey him. To obey is better than sacrifice. It is good that we obey God at this end time. If you know you will see Jesus at the last day, you have to obey God. Let us do what he commanded us to do. Because the road going to heaven is very narrow. It is not wide. We can't do what we like. It's a road that we have to be careful. It's narrow. The word of God says many are called, but few are going to be chosen. So the road is not wide, we don't believe. We have to tread carefully so that we'll be able to enter. That is why we're asked to pass through the narrow road. Because the broad one is leading to destruction. He said many are those that find it. Those people that find the broad road can do what they like. 
You can live in rebellious. You can live in fornication. You can live in adultery. You can lie. You can live in lying. You can live in cheating. You can do what you like. You can even dress like a harlot. These are the road that is broad. It's very wide. You can do what you want. But I pray this hour that God will help us to follow through the narrow road so that we will see Jesus at last in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, the reason why we are serving God is to make sure that we will be with him because he has promised us. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. When I'm done, I will be back to take you to myself. If only on this earth that we have hope, we are more miserable. This earth is not our home. We are waiting for new heaven and new earth, beloved brethren. We are in dwelling to righteousness. Dear, the soul will not smite you anymore. You will not hunger anymore. No tears anymore. No sorrow anymore, beloved brethren. That is why you must strive to enter this road. The disciple asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, are there many to be saved? Jesus said, strive to enter. Strive to enter. Because many will want to, but they will not be able. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray, may God help us Amen. to run this race in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to pray. Please, wherever you are, if you are a woman, kindly cover your hair. If you are a man, please take away the cap from your hair as we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity given to us again today thank to you. dine at your table. Amen. Lord, we have come. I don't have power of my own. Jesus, I put myself down that you may be seen. Let men and women that will be listening to the sound of my voice, O oh God, let them hear from the throne of grace that your word will do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I know when your people are about to hear your word, the enemy will try to hinder. I stand as your servant to come against every power of darkness. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft, wizard, satanic, free mercy, courtesy of any type. I bind your powers and your precious be bound in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, take us through control. Amen. That the end, your name alone be exalted. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. For in Jesus. Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. 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 Beloved brethren, you are all welcome again to this hour study in the name of Jesus. Please get your Bible ready, your paper, so that you can be able to ask your question. As we are going on, just put them down. <clears throat> if you have questions, put it down. We will answer your question. Hallelujah. Praise I want you to know that here is the gathering of the heavenly candidates. In true holiness and righteousness. Most of the things you cannot hear from the pastor who will tell you here. Because we are at time, beloved brethren. True holiness and righteousness. Because many holiness have been defied. Holiness is bringing straight things into the, 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 the preaching of holiness these days. It's not supposed to be so. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please invite your brother, your friends, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your children. Gather them together. Tell them it's time for us to study the word of God. If you are staying with somebody that... It's not understanding what we are saying. Please try to interpret. For so doing, God will bless you in return. Amen. So that they will not be left out. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So please get your barrel. Get your barrel. If you are WhatsApp, the number is there. You can call on WhatsApp. If you don't have enough credit, you can call us briefly. Then we can take your question. Or if you want to pass your question in, just write it down and put it on the net. We'll read it out and we'll discuss it together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today we are going to talk about quality of a sound church. Qualities 
of a sound church. How the church that Jesus died for supposed to be. Today, we are bringing worldliness into the church and church into the world. All is missing together. It's not supposed to be so. Quality of a sound church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we are able to live by the instruction of Jesus, we will not go astray. We will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The word of God is for correction. Whether you are a bishop, whether you are an apostle, whether you are a pope, whether you are an evangelist, whether you are an elder, deacon, choir master, choir mistress, prophet, prophetess, the word of God is for correction, is for reproof. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that we will not miss the road, beloved brethren. So if we think that we can't be able to take correction, then we are missing the road. May the Lord strengthen us Amen. to be the doers of the word of God Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Qualities of a sound church. The church that Jesus died for. Myself and yourself, we are the church. The beauty is not the church. We are the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gate of hell will not prevail. We are the church. Jesus has came, for example, so that we will be able to live according to the standard, the principle which he left behind. Also the footsteps of the apostles. That is why the Bible says, if an angel or man come and preach any doctrine, which Apostle Paul, Peter, James, John, and the brethren, Jesus did not preach. He said, let such one be our cause. How the church supposed to be, the quality. Hallelujah. Praise As we are continuing, let us start by reading Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, 26 to 27. We start our reading from Ephesians 5, 26 to 27. Ephesians chapter 5. Please take up your Bible and let's go to the Word of God together. Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. 26-27. I read. So, so that he might satisfy her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, with the word 27, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brethren, this is the church that Jesus died for. A church that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The word of God is the water that we use to wash ourselves. Some may say, how can a young man take heed to the word of God? He said, by taking heed. That is how you are able to roll this race. By taking heed to the word of God. By obeying the word of God. David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you, God. This word of God is for our example. This is the mirror that we use to look at ourselves. If you are not walking towards the standard of the word of God, beloved brethren, if you are compromising, you are diluting the word of God because of member of your church, that they will be offended. Beloved brethren, on the last day, you have question to answer. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that should be holy and without blemish. You cannot have 99.9, it must be 100% holiness. That's what God demanded from us. Be ye holy because I am holy. That's what God says. It is very possible, beloved brethren, the way you talk, talk like a holy brethren. 
the way you dress, dress like a holy brethren. What you do, do it like a holy brethren. A church without spot or wrinkle. If there's a spot in your body, which is sin, you know, brethren, you can't see Jesus. Every unrighteousness is sin. There's no big sin. There's no small sin. A church without spot or wrinkle. This is the church that Jesus died for. That is why the Bible says that many are called, but few are going to be chosen. People going to heaven are not going to be many. That is the truth. People that are going to heaven, people that will be raptured, people that will go with Jesus, whether dead or alive, are not going to be many. The Bible says as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. And if we look at the days of Noah, we could see that just only eight souls. So therefore, we must be careful, beloved brethren, because on that day, there is no excuse. God will not tolerate any excuse. Many people are dying 24 hours, but the reason why God kept you alive is that you will be able to take heed to the word of God so that you will not miss the road. So in every area you are not measuring up, try to retrieve your step back to him. God is still able to forgive every sin as long as you are still alive. Because when you die, it will be too late. There is no repentance in the grave. Hallelujah. A church without spot or wrinkle. If there is a sin in your body, in your life, if there are restitution, you refuse to restitute. If there are forgiveness, you refuse to forgive. Brethren, every area of your life, if you refuse to amend them, you will not see Jesus on that day. May God help us Amen. to do the right thing before it's too late in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to study Titus chapter 2 from 1 to 15. Qualities of a sound church, how it's supposed to be. Titus chapter 2, 1 to 15. Let us study the book of Titus. Let me read if you find it for us. Titus, Titus chapter 2. From 1, yes. I read from 1. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Mm. Older men are to be temperate, dignified, mm. sensible, mm. sound in faith, in love, in, in perseverance. Mm. Older women, theory, older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, nor malicious. No malicious gossip, no enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husband, to love their children, to be sensible, pure workers at home, mm. kind being subject to their own husband so that the mm. word of God will not be dishonored. Mm. Sis, likewise, urge the young men to be sensible in all things. Show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity in doctrine, mm. dignify it, sound in speech. Mm which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame, having nothing bad, having nothing bad, so having nothing bad 
to say about us. Now, urge both servants to be subject to their own masters in everything, to be well pleasing, not ag argumentative. Mm. Ten, not preferring, but showing all good faith so that they might adorn the daughter of God, our Savior, in every respect. Mm. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, mm. instructing us to deny, uh, to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Yeah. 13. Yeah. Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our, our great God and Savior Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless day and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. 15, the last. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we know that Titus is one of the first ordained bishops to the church of Galatians. Now, Paul was instructing our brother Titus. These are the character that a child of God is supposed to possess. Quality of a sound church. Because Jesus wants a church that is without spot or wrinkle. The church is me and you, beloved brethren. Not the building where you are worshiping. The church is you and me. We must be ready to cleanse ourselves. If there is a seed found in us, whether you are a bishop, whether you are an apostle, whether you are a pope, there is no big sin and there is no small sin. Every unrighteousness is a sin. What you're supposed to do, you are not doing it, is a sin. You are a pastor, you are preaching, you are diluting the word of God, it's a sin. We must always try to watch our life with the word of God. Because God is not a respecter of anybody, beloved brethren. He said, but speak thou things which become a sound doctrine. We can't find sound doctrine in the church today. Even in the body of holiness, there is no sound doctrine. Holiness has been defied. There is no sound doctrine. Today we have holiness of water, holy water, holiness of, of uh, uh, naughty oil, Holiness of April, holiness of candle, holiness of sun, holiness of IVF, holiness of condom, holiness of women lying on top of their on top of their husband. There is no more sound doctrine. The Bible says many are called, but few are going to be choosing. The road to heaven is narrow. This is the bitter truth that we need to hear at this end time. Brethren, God is not a respecter of anybody. A man of God must be able to teach a sound doctrine. Sound doctrine are the doctrines that are not compromised. Daniel proposed and said, I will not defy myself with the king's meat. How the church is supposed to be? A glorious church without spot or wrinkle. From the people down to the congregation today, all is dirty. Jesus is crying, my church is dirty. My church is dirty. Why? There is no sound doctrine. The enemy have made agreement with many pastors, many teachers, that they should compromise the word of God with just one thing. That is enough. Just compromise with one thing. That is enough. Still be preaching holiness, but just compromise with one thing and keep on preaching holiness. Many people are on their way to hell 
Many have deviated from the sound doctrine. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We are not teaching our members what will make them to be happy, what they want to hear. But let us remember that it is God that we to obey rather than man. He said that the age may be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, charity and patience, sound in God. Young men, here is instructing us that a young man will be grave, temperate, sound in faith. Sound in faith. Not young men that are defied. Sound in faith, like our brother Joseph. Joseph knew the right thing to do when, she was, when he was enticed by that woman. He refused. He ran. Young men, sound in faith. Today, young men in the church are having boyfriend and girlfriend. Even pastors, choir master, choir mistress. It's so quiet today before a choir master will approach somebody that will sing. He must sleep with that, that person first. Sound doctrine. Jesus is coming, beloved brethren. As it was in the days of Noah, just eight souls were saved. In the days of Lot, just three souls is supposed to be four. But Lot's wife looked back like many Christians are looking back today. Please, wherever you are, hear the sound of my voice. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. You can be a preacher. If you are not preaching the sound doctrine, if you dilute the word of God to make your congregation to be happy, you will not see Jesus on that day. Because he's not a respecter of anybody. He said, eight men, eight, the eight women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. That the eight women be in behavior as becoming holiness, a holy sister. A sister that can obey their husband. A sister that can be able to do the right thing at home. A sister that can be a real helpmate to the husband. The age women likewise, that they be uh, in behavior as becoming holiness. How many sisters are still living in holiness? When we are going to church, you cover your hair, you cover everywhere. But when you get home, you put perme and put everything in your hair. The age women likewise that they be behavior that becoming holiness. God wants you to become holy, dear sister. Holy in the church. Holy at home. Holy when you are doing business. Holy in the marketplace. God wants women to be holy. Holy in your dressing. Holy in your speech. That's right. As you are conversing with your husband, it must be holy. That is how God wants you to be. A quality of a sound church. The reason why we have problems in our marriages, in our homes, in our church today is because we are not playing our part. The woman wants to be the head. Today what we are seeing is that women are not becoming pastors, which is not by blicker. Women are not becoming pastors who are not leading men. That is not your position. You don't know your position. If you know your position, you will be taking the place of a man. Equality of a sound church. The age women likewise that they be in behavior that become a holiness. How many sisters are still living a holy life? The way you talk, the way you dress, where you go, where you walk, how many? No false accusers, nor giving to much wine, teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Our age women are supposed to be teachers of good things. Who are they to teach? The Bible will tell us who. That they may teach the young women to be sober. A woman is to teach the young women. But today, women are leading in churches. You are pastoring men. It's not supposed to be so. That they will teach the young women to be sober. You are to teach the young ones coming. Women, not men, to be sober. This is a role of a woman. Today we have bishop, woman. 
apostle woman, pastor woman, evangelist woman. They are all. But brethren, let us return back to the church. Jesus is demanding his church back to himself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It may be bitter, but this is the truth. Whenever Jesus is saying the truth, they want to kill him. Away with him, is what they say. Let us kill him away with him. He was preaching, the disciples, people were living. He looked at Peter and said, Peter, your people are going, can't you go? Peter said, to whom shall we go? This is the true word of God. If you want to see Jesus at the last day, you must obey the word of God. You must know your part. The quality of a sound church. We are the church. This is how it's supposed to be, but it is not how it is today. Women are not playing their role. Men are not playing their role. The, the young ones are not playing their role. Everything has become opposite of what God wants. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband. This is your role as a woman. As a woman. This is the role. Like my wife, she's an aged woman. She will be able to teach the young women coming a good life. How to respect their husband. That's what the Bible is saying here. Not to teach me. Not to teach men. Teach the young women on how to live holy also in their matrimonial home. But today what a man can do, women can do it. That is the problem that we have. Let us know that we are going to heaven. This earth is not our home. If only on this earth you have hope, you are more miserable, beloved brethren. Let us obey the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise to the love Lord. their husband. Teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. This is what our elderly women have to teach the young one coming. This is their role. If everybody are playing their role, the body of Christ will be moving on fine. The voice that we are seeing here and there very easily will not be there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said to love their children, to be discreet, just keep us of home. This is a position of women. Keepers of home. Keepers of home. There's something uh, uh, that, that, that the world has bring into the system today. That when God called a man, called a wife, it is not biblical. There's no way in the Bible that God called a man and called his wife. No. The woman can assist as a helpmate, but God does not call that woman to become a pastor. If your husband is a doctor, does that mean that you are a doctor? No. These are things of God that we must take seriously. Even in holiness, we are not seeing apostles. In holiness, we are not seeing evangelists. It's not biblical. If you say the Bible, we're having just one evangelist. Just one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the church that Jesus died for, the sound church, as it was of old. According to how the apostles they lived their life, that is how it's supposed to be. A sound church. Age women teach the younger one to love their husband, to love their children. That is your work. Not to teach man. Not to be preaching to man as a pastor. You are not a pastor. You are not preaching to men. Men that are sitting other such pastors, they don't know what they are doing. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing themselves a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing all corruptness. Young men, in doctrine, show all corruption. Don't divide the word of God. Don't corrupt the word of God. Say it as it is. 
Don't please men or women. Preach it as it is in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May God help us to obey the word of God. Amen. This is how the sound church is supposed to be. Gravity, sincerity. But today there is no sincerity in the body of Christ. Both among young men, among the elderly one, among pastors, pastors, teachers, prophets, prophetess, there is no more sincerity. Jesus is coming, beloved brethren. He's coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. If there's a wrinkle in your body, which is sin, you will see Jesus on that day. He's not a respecter of anybody. And there is no excuse. The road shall be called a way of holiness. Without holiness, without righteousness, without peace, no eye shall see the Lord. In your conduct, you must be holy. In your preaching, pastor, what you are teaching, it must be holy. It must be holy. Sound church. When you are not diluting the word of God, you want to make your congregation or your follower to be happy. Telling them what they want, you will give account of it. Eight, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Young men, the Bible says you should try to be sound in speech. Don't bend. Be sound in speech. Your yeah, yeah, your name, name, the truth you must speak that cannot be condemned. That when the unbeliever, the opposite side, if they are mistakenly taking you for wrong, they will come back to the say of the truth. You are a good person. Quality of a sound church. We are the church, not the beauty. The church must return back to Jesus. Jesus is demanding his church back. A church that he died for. Pastor, you did not die for any church. Apostle, you did not die for any church. Evangelist, you did not die for any church. Prophet, prophetess, you did not die for any church. Therefore, open your mouth and speak the sound doctrine. Tell them the truth. Because the road is narrow. Jesus says, strive to enter. For many will try, but they will not be able. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Exhaust Sabbath to be obedient to their own master. Be obedient to your master. Congregation, be obedient to your pastor. If your pastor is teaching you the right doctrine, but if he's not teaching you the right doctrine, I always say, any man of God that preach a sermon without telling the people about heaven and hell, that man of God is not qualified to be a man of God. Any topic you are teaching from the word of God without telling people about hell and heaven, how they will avoid hell, you are not qualified to be a man of God. This is the reason why Jesus came. That we will not go to hell. Any message you are preaching, Monday to Sunday, you must apply. You must include heaven. You must include hell. Telling them what to do to enter heaven. Tell them what to avoid, not to go to hell. But today, what to build our pockets? We are not allowing Jesus to build the church anymore. We want that and offer it to, to be big. We don't want to say the truth. Even a pastor can see a boy and a girl coming to church holding their hands when they are not even married. The man of God will not say anything. So pastors, you see women that does not dress well. Women exposing their breasts. You'll be praising that woman that she's doing fine. She's beautiful. If you're a child of God and you see, see somebody that put cake or makeup or a lash or or attachment of any type in the body, dress seductively, and you still commit that person good, you know that you are a candidate of hell. Not those that do it, but those 
who are also encouraging or supporting them. A sound church, the church that will make rapture, is a church without spot or wrinkle. If there's any sin in you, you will not be able to go to heaven. If your restitution is not complete, you will see Jesus. Your forgiveness, asking for forgiveness from those whom you have offended, if it's not complete, paper you are using in your working place, if it does not belong to you, that result, you must go there and, and make everything. The passport you are carrying up and down, if it does not belong to you, you must return it back to the owner. Where you are walking, if the time is 9 o'clock and you get there 10, you clock in 9, you are on your way to hell. If you are a man of God, you are teaching doctrine, not of Jesus Christ. You are adding to it. You are on your way to hell. Hell is a land, you know, brethren. That is where we must be careful. Whatsoever we don't find in the word of God, we don't take it and we don't preach it. Hallelujah. A sound church. Many are called, but few are going to be choosing. People going to heaven are going to be very small. It doesn't matter how congregation you have. It doesn't matter how you have the churches all over the whole world. The church without spot or wrinkle. It's what Jesus wants. May God give us the grace to run without spot or wrinkle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He said, and, and so please them with all things, not answering again. Servants, when instruction is given. Children, when your parents give instruction, don't answer again when you hear. If your pastor gives instruction, don't answer again. If you hear at the first time, we must try to serve God in spirit and the truth, in holiness and righteousness. Jesus said, they that will worship God, worship God in spirit and in truth, because God is spirit. A child that is not defied. If you are still living in secret sin, beloved brethren, you must have made your ways, because this hour is what we have. Tomorrow may be too late. If we know our position to play in our home, in the church, everything will move on smoothly. But when a woman wants to play the role of a man, then the problem comes. Forgetting that a woman is a help meet for the man, not the head. The man is the head. A man is the head. A church where the woman is the head is not a church. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is a hard doctrine. But if you accept the word of God, you will be able to see him at the end. Hallelujah. He said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. What has this grace come to do? Because people are thinking that because of grace we can do what we want. No, it's not a lazy for sin. No. He said, The grace have come in verse 12, teaching us that deny of godliness. This is what grace has come to do, beloved brethren. Quality of a sound church. Teaching us to deny ungodly and worldly lusts. My eye have seen, I must take it. Worldly lusts. My friend have that, I must have it. Worldly lusts. This is what grace has come to teach us. To avoid worldly lusts. To avoid things that are ungodly. Things that are not righteous. This is what the grace has come to do, beloved brethren. To make us to run away from sin. Every unrighteousness is a sin. What you're supposed to do 
and you are not doing it, it becomes a sin. There is no big sin, there is no small sin. Jesus is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. If you are defied because nothing defied will enter, sin will defy you. If you are not playing your position, you are supposed to be, you will be defied. Somebody is asking here, can a woman become a pastor under a man? Can a woman be a pastor under a man? If you say the word of God, there is nowhere we're told that a woman should become a pastor of the church. Today, many pastors are ordaining their wives. It's a selfish region because it will be after the pastor, then the wife. In some churches, after the wife, the children. It becomes a business. There is no woman pastor in the Bible. It's not there. We can't see one. Now, people are defending themselves, saying that when Jesus resurrected, he appeared to Mary. That was true. But what did Jesus say to Mary? He said, go and tell my brethren and Peter. That's the message he sent. Go and tell my brethren and Peter. The truth is bitter. There is no woman pastor. There is no woman evangelist. There is no woman bishop. It's not biblical. We see where a woman has a role to play. It must be under a man, but not ordained as a pastor. It's not biblical. When Judas died, Mary Madeline was there. She's supposed to be ordained as one of the apostles. But the apostle did not do that. So if you're a pastor, you are ordaining your wife to become a pastor to assist you, you are not doing the right thing. It's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. So a role of a woman here, we see here that women should teach the younger ones to be sober to respect their husband, to love their children. Women have their position. Women will teach women. Women will lead women. Today, women want to lead men. It's not possible. And it's not biblical. It is not biblical. There is no reward for it. And there is no Bible place that back you to become a pastor as a woman. Women are allowed to teach younger women on how to live and teach the children. That's what the Bible said. But not to pastor a church. Hallelujah. The Lord. Many pastors are going to hell because of their wives. Somebody wrote here that many pastors are going to hell because of their wives. We should be able to avoid this in holiness. The teaching you are hearing here is from the body of Christ preparing people for the coming of the Lord. Their true holiness because many holiness have been defied. Their true holiness is what you are hearing. Candidate of heaven. We are preparing people for the coming of the Lord in true holiness and righteousness because there are many things that are coming to the body of Christ which is not biblical. For example, you ask a pastor, the use of condom that you permit to be used, is it biblical? There is no place in the Bible that they will say. No place in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no place. In fact, the condom that you are asking people to use is artificial because that is not your body. When you put on condom now, you are put on artificial. If you are condemning people not to wear artificial, you are also condemned because condom is artificial. It's not your body. We are not even told on how to prevent children in the Bible. It's not biblical. Men are saying we are using wisdom. That is your, your own wisdom. It's not from the Bible. Lean not unto your own understanding. 
God said, you know my ways. Acknowledge me and I will direct your path. When you are telling people to take prevention of any type, implant or whatsoever, you are not tempering what God has created. Now you are no more holy because you temper what God has created originally. IVF taking away of sperm from a man or a woman is no more original. If really that sperm is taken out from that man or that woman, you have tempered it. It's no more original. The way God created men and women is a man will impregnate the woman, not by artificial. Once you are not using egg planting and all the rest, it becomes artificial. It's not by bricka to be used. Once it is an artificial, you are your way to hell. It becomes artificial. You are tempering what God has made originally. It's no more original. But today, the church, they want what will please them. They want what will make them to be happy. They don't want to be offended. This is why men of God are teaching these heresies. It's not in the Bible. It's not biblical. Today we go and bring doctor, say doctor, come and teach IVF. What will doctor teach? Doctor is not God. It's not biblical. The God has instructed us. He said, go and multiply. That's what he says. It becomes a sin now when you are preventing children. Because you are doing the opposite of what God said we should do. And when God asked Noah to enter the ark, he did not ask him to take condom along with him. So where is this doctrine coming from? From the pit of hell. To make our congregation to be happy. Jesus is coming. The Bible says many are called, but few are going to be choosing. People going to heaven are small. There are not many, beloved brethren. Not all those that say, my Lord, my Lord, we enter the kingdom of God. This is a hard saying. Do you want to obey God or you want to obey my? I have asked many holiness preachers what you are preaching, telling people to use condom, IVF, and all the rest. Women lie down on top of their husband. It is not biblical. With my age, beloved brethren, I have never seen animal, a female animal, lie down on top of a male animal. Why would this teaching become into holiness at all? It's a sin. It's flesh. You will never see a female goat lie down on top of a male goat or do it the opposite. It's not. What harlots are doing, this is what you are bringing to the church, the body of Christ, especially now in holiness. Hallelujah. Is it a question? Many pastors cannot tell the people to throw away artificial things because of their wives. Somebody said many pastors cannot tell people to throw away artificial things because of their wives. Hallelujah. We must speak the truth. I am here with my wife. When my wife is not doing things that will glorify God, I will tell her. If I'm not doing what will glorify God, she will tell me. May we not be like Ananias and Sapphira that go to hell the same time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Woman, correct your husband. Even though he slap you, correct him. Tell him, my husband, this will lead you to hell. Man, correct your wife. Every unrighteousness is a sin. There is no big sin, there is no small sin. What your pastor is teaching you, if he's not giving you by board to back it, don't obey. We are Bible believers ministry. Candidates of heaven is who we are preparing, beloved brethren. If you want to see Jesus on the last day, be ye holy because God is holy. Holy in your conversation, holy in your dressing, holy in your conduct, holy. Even though when somebody wrong you, still know that you are a holy person. We have read, he said, women, you have your place to, you have your place, your role to play in the home, in the church. But today, the church has become worldly. The worldly has become church. All is missing together. There is no truth from the pulpit to the congregation. Jesus is saying, my church is dirty. 
Many will be preaching and jumping up and down. Rapture will happen. Many will not go to heaven. Hallelujah. So Where we are reading in Titus chapter 2, verse 12, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly loss, men and women, young and old, you must run from unworldly loss. We are the world. We are not of the world. Not what the world are doing, we will do. No. You are a child of God. Heaven is your place. We must focus. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, this evil world. We should live holy, righteous, soberly. Even though we are in the world, we will not be like the world. Most people, you have compromised your faith because you are in Europe. But I want you to understand that God in Europe is God in Africa. When I was growing up, I don't see my mother wearing trousers. I don't see my sisters wearing trousers. But civilization has entered the church. Now we know how we made trousers. How come about all these things? We must repent because Jesus is already at the door. There is no more time. Hallelujah. May God help us prepare. Amen. Every artificial is a sin. The condom you are using is artificial. To take egg from a woman or from a man become artificial. It's no more original. IVF system is an artificial. It's not original. So if a holiness pastor is teaching to teaching people to avoid artificial, you yourself must teach the right thing. Otherwise, hair is a large. God is not a respecter of anybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he may redeem us from iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We are peculiar people. We are people that are supposed to be sanctified. A glorious church. A church that is not defied. A church without sin. That is how we're supposed to be. But today, what are we like? This thing speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. This was our apostle Paul was telling Titus. This did teach because we are in a time where men are having itchy ears looking for pastors who will tell them what they want. Heaven is real and hell is real. If you must make heaven, you must abide to the word of God. You must be holy because God is holy. Without holiness, without righteousness, without peace with men, no eye shall see the Lord. If you have your question, you can send me your question now before we pray tonight. A quality of a sound church. The church is me and you. But we have defied the church today. Choir members will be wearing trousers and be singing in the altar. So we'll be doing kingdom dance, throwing leg up and down in the altar. The fear of God is no more there anymore. Comedians will come to our altar and be cracking jokes. My house is supposed to be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it to become a den of rubber. Hello places. Women dressing half naked. Your breast is being seen. You don't care. Jesus is coming, beloved brethren. Without holiness, without righteousness, in and out, no eye shall see the Lord. This rebuke with all authority, exhort, speak, and teach is what Paul was telling our brother Titus. Quality of a sound church, the church that Jesus died for, the church that is without spot or wrinkle. If there's wrinkle in you, you will not see Jesus. If there's sin in you, you will not see Jesus. 
We must run away from sin before it is too late. We must obey God than our pastor. Can pastor marry two wives, one in Europe and one in Africa? God bless you. No. The Bible says that from the beginning, God made them husband and wife. One, not two. If you are if you are if you are an unbeliever before you marry, when you now know Christ, you must do restitution. The first wife you pay the bride price, that is your wife. All other ones are not your wife. You must take them back, you must leave them. If you marry when you were unbeliever, now you repented. The first woman whom you pay the bride price, that is the only one that is your wife. Other one must go. You can't have wife in Europe, one in Africa. Those of you that are doing contract marriage, there's nothing like contract marriage. When you marry, you are married. You say what to do for paper's sake. You are walking towards her. As you are married to that woman, she is your wife. If you pay her dowry legally, you can't say, let me marry a white woman to get paper. Then I have another wife in Africa. No, you are walking your way to her. According to this question, can pastor marry two wives? One in Europe, one in Africa? The answer is no. The first one, you pay the bride price. That is your legal wife. And nobody is permitted to marry when their wife or their husband is still alive. This is the bitter truth. It is death that will do you part. That is why the Bible says many are called, but few are going to be choosing. People going to heaven are not going to be many. Today, pastors drive away their wife and marry choir member in the church. And the church is still booming. People are still coming. May we not go to hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. The truth is bitter, beloved brethren. We have to repent. Without holiness, without righteousness, no eye shall see the Lord. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a brother, you cannot marry two or three wives. No way. It is one wife in lifetime. We are going to pray. Please try to share this message in your Facebook in YouTube, in your WhatsApp, this is one of the sad doctrines that Jesus wants at these last days. Let us obey the word of God, not our pastor. Some of you that are saying, my pastor is using wisdom. There is no wisdom your pastor is using. All wisdom we need to know is in the word of God. Your pastor cannot add his own wisdom. It's leading you to hell. Some of these pastors have agreed with the devil to work with them, to compromise the word of God. With just one point. But they are ashamed to come back to repentance. Hair is a large. There is no respecter of persons with God. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray if there is no other question. If you still have your question, if I am off the line, you can ask. Here is the gathering of the heavenly candidates. In true holiness. In true holiness. Holiness that is not defied. Not holiness of holy water or candle or, 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 or a handkerchief or sand or soap or apron. Holiness of women like that of their husband. No! Say, see, animal cannot do that. It is her Lord that are doing that. It is flesh that may pass us to be teaching such messages. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Heaven is free. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We have heard your word. Yes, Lord. Father, the entrance of the word gives us light. Amen. Lord, let us be the doers of your word. Amen. That at the end, we will have every cause to glorify your name. Amen. As men have heard your word tonight, O oh God, is there any who have not yet done their restitution? Father, Help them quickly because tomorrow will be too late. Amen. And they see who have not yet done their forgiveness. Father, help them to forgive us men who have offended them. Amen. 
Amen. That they will also go and ask for forgiveness from those who they have offended. Amen. Let them amend their ways, O oh Lord God. Amen. Every area they have seen, let them expose it to God and confess it and forsake them all. Amen. That they will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whether men of God that have preached diluted world, help them to come back to their senses, Amen. that they will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as your people are going to bear tonight, speak to them individually, Lord, in the language that we understand, O oh God. Amen. If you shall tarry, make us see the next day to your glory. Amen. Well, thank you, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as I have spoken your word, I cover myself, my wife, and children with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Every Jesus. power of darkness, witchcraft, wizard, satanic frequency, courtesy power, the one to raise his ugly head to where this message. I bind your powers and your precious be banned in heaven in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I thank you, thank you Jesus. because you answer thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not yet received Jesus, say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I've heard your word. I know you died for me. Please, Jesus, forgive my sins. Counsel my name for the book of death. Put my name in the book of life. Thank you because it is done in Jesus' name. If you are praying such a prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. You need a church where you'll be taught on how to live a holy life or how to do your restitution, forgiveness, or how to admit all your ways, your confession. If you live in Europe, you can worship with us. We are living in the Republic of Ireland. Blanchester W15. Every Monday, we have our prayer meetings from 5. Every Wednesday, we have a Bible study from 5 also. Every Sunday by 12 noon, we start our fellowship. Come and God will richly bless you. If you live in Nigeria, we have a place in Benin City, we have a place in Abuja, we have a place in Delta State Worry. Locate any of the churches. And God will bless you too in the name of Jesus. Mm. If you are listening to a dull language, coming Wednesday, this message will be repeat with a dull language. Please call your mother, your father, try to buy their telephone that will make them be able to see me live. As I will use a dull Bible to repeat this message in a dull language. Or a dull speaking worldwide. Be with me on Wednesday at the same time, 8 to 9 UK time. God bless you. Remain rapturable. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.